2023 presidential elections may end PDP, says former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. Also, a clergyman, Elijah Yodili, says cabals and the state governors will break the party. And are governors in the southeast overwhelmed by insecurity or are they simply not working together? Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar has expressed concerns over the continuity of the People's Democratic Party, admitting that losing the 2023 presidential elections may send the party into political oblivion. And he was worried that he, alongside the members of the BOT, would be retired politically should another party win the election. Also, the leader of the INRI Evangelical Spiritual Church, Primate Elijah Yodili, has said some cabals and state governors in the People's Democratic Party will break the party. He further added that the cabal would blackmail the party's national chairman, Iyocha Ayu, and try to reduce him to nothing as they did his predecessor, Uche Sekundus. Well, joining us to discuss this is former Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, in River State, Darlington Oji, and PDP Chieftain and Strategist Demola Olariwaju. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I'll start with you, uh, Darlington. Now, just yesterday, I was speaking with the chairman, uh, Equerry Local Government Area, on the war of wars between the governor of your state and the governor of a Doe state. That's on the one hand. Um, governor Wike also has been in a war of wars with uh, Governor Dave Umahi on the issue of the court judgment saying that he should stop parading himself as uh, the governor of the state. Now, we also are seeing um, the governor again talking to the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, um, saying that he does not own the People's Democratic Party. Governor Wike seems to be having a very busy 2022. Well, uh, for me, thank you for giving me the privilege to speak on some of these issues. Uh, you know, this is a transition period where you expect a lot of things to happen. Uh, Governor Wiki is not in a world of words with any person. You know, when a man stands out and decides to tell the truth at all times, you will be misinterpreted. What Governor Wiki simply means, in the case of uh, Omahi, is that the law is very clear in the area of defection, what will happen and will amount to the reason you could defect. You could defect when there is a crack at the national level of your political party. It will be enough reason. But in this case where you said, uh, because PDP has not formally zoned uh, the presidential position to the southeast, then it's now a proper or a cogent reason for you to defect. It is not. And again, when the governor is making a statement that says, that he knows the people that are behind him. Of course, Governor BK, as a man that has invested so much in this party, needs to come up to say, you don't need to suspect people. You don't need to begin to investigate who are the people that are responsible. Members of PDP are responsible. And we are not shying away from that. We are responsible because we won an election through our platform. There is no independent candidacy as of today or as of when this election was conducted. So because you won the election through our vehicle, which is the PDP, of course, you either abandon PDP and give us what belongs to us. So that is not the world of wars. As it regards to uh, the Edo State Governor, uh, Godwin Obaseki, again, you saw clearly when the Deputy Governor threatened the political party called PDP. And he was talking as if he was the damn god or he was the life wire of PDP in Edo State. And nobody could take that. Nobody can, you know, unleash threat on a political party that was already built before your arrival. What is even the issue? The issue, of course, I know you know now as a media person, that the issue has to do with the structure of the party at the lo uh, state level, local government level, and world level. Election has been conducted, congresses have been conducted, people have already emerged before you came in as a candidate or as a man who is seeking to contest the election. And of course, you know that there are people that are supposed to run the election under our political party. 
But people like Governor Wicke stepped in and had a lot of sleepless nights to make sure that our people come together. Balai, you run that election. Remember, in the issue of harmonization, who would have as well said, okay, you take the governor and allow the old members of the PDP, the deputy governor. But since it is, you prefer she, uh, Philip Shaibu and have allowed you to run, why come to dismantle what is already in existence? So what the governor says is very clear, that people should not be ingrate. People should not be seen as people that are very ungrateful when a favor is being done on them. So it is not the word of war. It is the sincerity truth that the governor is saying. The governor is standing out to say, look, he has invested so much in this political party. You remember when we were almost going on distinction or extinction uh, during the Amudi Sharif period? Who are the governors that stood behind? Where are all these people? Governor Wicke was one of those that stood behind and invested a lot for this party to remain together. So when the man said, look, you must carry everybody along and allow people who are already in existence to be, as a governor, you have a commanding influence. Why talk about destroying or disbanding the structure that is already in existence? Governor Wicke is one man that will stand up for the truth and rivers people are comfortable with that. And that is why we elected him two times to mount the leadership of River State and be our spokesman. And for us, it's the pride of rivers people and whether any person likes it or not, Governor Wicker is the most viable voice in PDP assistance today. He has not delayed. He has not gone astray. What we are saying is that when people do you a favor, try to remain steadfast in your own path of commitment. Don't be what people assume you are, especially when warnings we are giving ahead of time. By Governor Fayoshe, former Governor Fayoshe, who said, look, Obasege is going to win this election. PDP, you are running around him to make sure you give him ticket, after which, we are very sure that he will not stay in the party. And even if it is true that that is what he can do, you can prove people wrong. So say, look, I can fight my fight here, have my disagreement here, and remain in the party to build it to be very much stronger than what he met it. So why can will your deputy governor begin to threaten the party? Nobody that is very reasonable in our party will take that, especially before the national chairman. Nobody will take it. So what has the governor done? What the governor has done is that there should be a little decorum in what we are and he wants to respect people's own opinion. It is not a command structure. It is something that you bring up your own opinion and others will bring up the best brain we now have today. So for us, the statement started from the threat that was issued by the uh, deputy governor of uh, uh, the state, Philip Shaibu. It is unacceptable by us and we cannot accept it as political people. We okay. have suffered so much in this party. We are ready to rescue Nigeria and together we must build the party. So we cannot leave it in the hands of any person that can threaten us about leaving, even when we are aware that you are not ready to stay here. So don't look for flimsy excuses as a reason that we want to do. I see, I see where you're coming from, but it's interesting because it makes it seem like there are no PDP members in Edo State. Why would the governor... I mean, it's all fair that the governor at some point had to be part of the electioneering process that brought Governor Basaki into office. But then there are PDP members. There's the PDP leadership within the state. In fact, the, the PDP national chairman visited Edo State to try to uh, somewhat circumvent that problem and, and bring peace. Why should Governor Wike be most interested in Edo State elections? I mean, there they have their party leadership. Why can't he let them deal with Edo State problems and face River State? If you remember what happened in Obasege's election, you know, we know that Wike has three days sleepless night. Wike was barely living in the door. But that's and done. Again, I'm, I'm coming again. You will agree with me that Obasete came to River State to say that outside God in heaven, the next person that gave him this opportunity is Governor Yes of Wike. And if there are issues that are cropping up, he owed it as a duty or as a responsibility to call his friend to order. To say, could, could we just please put our hands together? Why do we need to you know, chase away part of people, especially people that have already been in existence. If PDP was not built by those in the Edo State, which house was he going to run to? So, Governor Wickham is now a visitor in Edo State, but during the electionary campaign, and when they were looking for where to be sheltered, Governor Wickham was not a visitor. My simple argument here is that, what we are saying is that, make sure you carry everybody along. There is already existing structure. Congresses are being held from the uh, world level, state, uh, local government level to state level. Why do you ask for the disbandment of such congresses that have been held uh, in the past? Reason because you want to put those that you believe that they are your people. But I can tell you as a governor, if you actually command the influence you think you command, the party structure will come to you eventually. 
What do you need to do? It mm. is because you already have segregated the party before you arrive. At. Otherwise, as a as a party chair, as a governor of the state, I wonder who is the state party chairman that cannot come to you? Who is the state uh, LJ party chairman that cannot come to you? So the reason is because you already have a mindset. And for us, nobody will come to destroy PDP. So that tomorrow you collapse the entire structure into APC or whichever political party you want to go. What we are saying is that we must, as a people of Nigeria, stand together to make sure that we rescue Nigeria okay. from this impediment that has been begotten our people through the government called APC. And okay. we are going to tell Nigerian people that, look, we can enter a fresh agreement with you because governance is about social contract. Now, okay. in social contract, you need to make promises to your people. Can you keep to them? So how will they look at us that you can make a promise to the people as soon as you are sent the truth that you change? Okay. The want to in okay. All right. Let me let me come to you, um, Demola. Uh, it's interesting because the PDP seems to be having its own fair share of crisis, even at the national level. But let's come. Uh, let's start with Oshun State. We saw recently a parallel primary uh, that held within the state. Two governorship candidates uh, emerged. Um, even in Lagos State, here um, we also know that. Um, uh, Chief Tain in the party has been uh, also in the news talking about the fact that certain members uh, of his um, group have been sidelined when it comes to um, giving juicy offices. I mean, uh, recently the um, uh, party um, um, congress, or I think, was held uh, in the state and certain offices, uh, offices were given or voted uh, for and then people emerged. I'll, I'd like to call names here now. Chibode George, uh, which we all know as a leader and a chieftain within the party, has allegedly uh, has said that you know forces within the party are allegedly trying uh, to exclude his supporters from key party positions. Um, so let's stay within the southwest. We're done talking about the south south. The PDP seems to be fighting on all fronts here, and I'm wondering why. Oh, well, I mean, because it's politics. Um, what you describe as a um, crisis, for some of us, it's mainly, you know, the art of politicking. Um, everybody has interest in politics. Politics is not a, it's not a family affair, especially when you have a political party as big as the People's Democratic Party. You have people with different tendencies. You have people with different, um, different um, orientations. You know, you have people with different kinds of approaches um, to issues. And so, what is going on for me is um, is a sign of a vibrant political party. Is a sign that you know um, everyone wants to be involved. Everyone um, wants to. Everyone feels that they are most qualified for positions. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, what matters is that we all play by the rules and we all stay within the rules. What happened um, in Lagos State is not something that many of us are happy about. And um, but we, you know, we are laying our complaints, you know, through the agri channel, through the proper channels to. Um, you know our, our grievances. We are bringing it to the to the appeal panel. We brought it to the appeal panel. We are bringing it to the NWC. We are taking it all the way to neck, um, and we are trying to explain that you know, look, this thing cannot stand the way it stands. Um, it shouldn't come out that way. Um, so, so that is in handle. But you know, generally in politics, politics is an engagement of conflicts. Um, someone is coming from one direction. The other person is coming from the other direction. Um, you would have conflicts, you would have a um, um, clash of interest, and that's very normal. Um, what is not normal, like I said, is when you do not play by the rules or when you, do, when you go um, beyond the rules. Um, an example is what is happening in Oshun State, for instance. You had a, a, a primaries, you had a Congress that was, um, the venue was duly certified by the NWC. INEC was informed, INEC was invited, security forces were informed, they were invited, they elect, the entire electoral panel went to that Congress and a winner emerged in person of Senator Adimola Adeniki. Now you had another group of people who did not participate in that in that Congress, went somewhere else to another venue and then um, claimed, you know, that they have also produced their own gubernatorial aspirants and are now trying to use the courts of law, you know, to 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 to, to win the ticket um, by backdoor method. Of course that's clearly not acceptable. That's not within the rules. Um, the party rules are clear. You contest, if you contest you make your um, grievances known to the appeal appeal panel. The appeal panel on that particular um, Congress was chaired by the national chairman of the party, the senator, Dr. Iyota Ayu. He chaired the appeal panel. Dr. Mabayemi did not bring his complaints, but, you know, he's trying to use the courts. And we have to say to the courts, look, don't allow yourself 
to be used in this particular instance in Osho State. The entire party structure is behind Senator Adema Adeleke, and we wish him well. So, what we term crisis basically um, for us in the PDP is a sign of a healthy political party. It's a sign of a party coming alive, you know, coming more alive um, as elections draw closer. You have various interest groups trying to push their positions forward. And um, that's basically what is happening. But what happened in Lagos is not something that all of us, some of us are happy about. Um, Chief Bodejo is our supreme leader in Lagos State. Um, he's a foremost leader of the party. And he's somebody that we respect very much. And so what is being done to some of us who support him or who are with him um, is actually we, we, we feel quite aggrieved about it. But again, you know, it's politics. Um, it's an engagement of conflict. And we will play the game um, by the rules of the game. When you talk about the fact that it's just politics, like, I, I, I'm trying to understand which part of it is supposed to be taken while sitting down. Because Chief Bodejord here is alleging that um, Avoji uh, cannot win Lagos State for the PDP. He's even alleging that he might be a mole from the APC trying to crash the PDP within the state. Well, I mean, again... We, 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 these are, these are, these are issues that, um, that we are working hard towards resolving. Um, do you think, of, do you think that, uh, do you think Ivoji is a mole from the APC? Well, I, I personally don't have them. I haven't had much interaction with him over the years. Um, so I cannot comment much about that, but I do know that, you know, um, um, Chief Bode George is somebody who believes strongly in this political party, and those of us who are, who are his followers, we also believe strongly in this political party. And so, if there are things that he has seen, um, then you know we have to we 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 we, we agree with those things that that because you know he is higher up, he sees a lot of things. He has been part of the Lagos establishment for much longer, even before some of us came into politics. And so, if he says something, is it? It is. Um, then it is up to you know the other side to come out and clarify their positions by proving their loyalty to the People's Democratic Party. But as as it stands today, um, um, the Lagos State Congress, what happened on that day was um, it was 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 all a mess. You know, basically it was all a mess. And well, we are trying to sort we are trying to sort it out. And at the end of the day, you know, we believe that a stronger and a more viral People's Democratic Party will emerge um, from Lagos State. So talking about PDP fighting on all fronts now. There was supposed to be a meeting on Monday for the um, NEC, but then we saw that that next meeting uh, was postponed uh, because of some drama that uh, happened at the National. In fact, we, um, there was an abrupt rescheduling of proceedings because, according to reports, this uproar was triggered by some leaders in the South that uh, had asked that um, those who defected from the APC into the party should not be given opportunities to pick up tickets to run for the elections in 2023. What's your position on this? And then I'll swing to Darlington. Well, of course, you know, again, like I say, it's politics. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm above six feet. If you ask me to, to play the zoning of the political positions, I will say give it to people who are above six feet. If I'm from the South, I'll try to play that to my advantage and say that, you know, um, zone it to the South. If I'm from the Southwest, you know, which I am, I will try to play to my advantage by saying, give it to the Southwest, just so that I can emerge. I will try to make sure that, you know, everything works in my favor, that the rules of the game are bent in my favor. But, you know, of course, at the end of the day, what we do know is that the People's Democratic Party is a totally democratic party. It is a party that believes strongly in Nigeria, and it is a party that will um, provide a level playing ground for all the aspirants to come out and contest. You know, so so um, I personally do not um, I do not align with the idea of zoning, and the reason is simple: the PDP, as a political party, practiced zoning all the while it was in power, um, um, and but PDP is no longer in power now, and zoning is a construct of power. You don't zone what you do not have. If you do not have power, you cannot be thinking of zoning. So for me, it is um, it attempts to tie your hand twice. You know, the first one is that you are not in, in control of power. You are not in control of the federal forces. You are not in control of security, which are the very important, crucial um, aspects of electioneering in Nigeria. And then secondly, you want to tie yourself by zoning also. I think, you know, um, that will amount to PDP shooting itself in the foot. And of course, indications are that. PDP is going to throw a level playing ground to everybody. But again, like I said, what is going on is that people are trying to zone things in their favor so that they might be the ones who will be the beneficiaries of it. 
um, when in politics, you know, you try to bend the rules as much as possible so that, you know, you gain an edge over your opponent, um, you know, so that everything plays in your favor, basically. So that's what's going on in the People's Democratic Party. But like I said, it's a sign of a healthy and viral political party. It's a sign of a party that is coming more alive as 2023 comes close. And I'm very confident that what matters at the end of the day is that the party gets it right in terms of aligning with the wishes and aspirations of the majority of Nigerians. It's very clear okay. that Nigerians are tired of the all progressive Congress. Nigerians are tired of the mission of the past past seven, eight, seven years, eight years by 2023. Nigerians are tired of it. And so the onus is on the People's Democratic Party to produce a candidate that will be able to work in line with the um, desires of Nigerians. Back to you, Darlington. And, and, and just to pick up from where um, uh, uh, he has just stopped, does the PDP have what it takes right now? Because, like I said, you're fighting on all fronts. It's, 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 I, your Chayu is trying to douse tension almost everywhere he turns. And now uh, the meeting at uh, the NEC was abruptly cancelled and rescheduled because of the uproar between, uh, within uh, the people in the South. Um, and then let's, let's quickly look at the former vice president here. He's spoken on the fact that losing the 2023 presidential election may end the PDP's reign ever in Nigeria. Again, he was also quoted to say that uh, he's likely to get the ticket because he's never not been given the ticket to run for the PDP. Is Vice President Atiku Abubakar, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, the one to be able to win that presidential election for the PDP come 2023? First of all, Nigerians need to congratulate the PDP as a political party, a party that is not in power uh, in the last about seven years now. Yet, problems that will erupt in the party are quickly handled, other than the All Progressive Congress that is in power and has the, all the influence of power of government within their domain, yet they could not organize ordinary uh, uh, convention since 2015 to date. It shows clearly that there are men of equitable characters, there are personalities in PDP that understand the proper definition of politics and that understand at all time, especially during transition period like this, that there are a lot of issues that will crop up and needs to be handled. For instance, there was a crack yesterday, I agreed with you, but very quickly, we need to fix our acts and the net meeting is on. I'm aware that we are also aware that the net meeting is going on. Other than the other political parties would have taken them ages for them to come together. Again, I agree with the fact that uh, the people of Nigerians are tired of this failed or progressive Congress that made all promises to Nigerian people yet they could not keep to one. I agree that these are combination of people, aggrieved people or Nigerians that had only one sole agenda, just grab the power and they don't know how to manage the power. Of course, uh, like the average Nigerian will say, PDP does not need much campaign. All PDP needs is just to present a credible person that Nigerians could have. And my question <laughs> is, do you think that former Vice President Atiku Abubakar is that man? Because he seems to be, you know, parading himself as one who will uh, uh, be able to uh, clinch that ticket for the presidential uh, elections come 2023. Uh, of course, the answer is no from my part. You know, when a man speaks very authoritative as if he has control of all the delegates in Nigeria, he does not have our own. By the special grace of God, some of us are delegates in that election, and he cannot read our mindset or decide how we are going to vote. In the last election, I didn't vote him, so he does not have the, the uh, you know, courage to decide that he will always win. Again, I'm sorry, you did not vote like the PDP in the last election. Uh, what? Who did you vote? No, you must allow me to make this point. I'm sorry, you, you, you just said something. You didn't vote for Vice President, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar in the last election. So who did you vote? Uh, for? No, in the primaries. In the primaries. Okay. You know, I had a preferred candidate in the primaries, who was uh, Aminu uh, Wazari Tambua of uh, Sokoto State. But when he emerged as the presidential candidate, of course, we had no choice as party people. We rallied grand support. And it is only in River State in all the 36 states of federation that, especially in PDP states, that the uh, APC will not record 25%. The indices are there for you to change. It shows clearly that we are fighting people. That is to say that no matter how we may feel, at the end of the primaries, if any person in mind, of course, we are fighting people. There is no way to go who support the person. But my, the point I'm making here is that nobody can sit and talk authoritative 
as if he has control of all the villages. Again, trial has been given before, and we have seen the man called Atiku. I'm not trying to run his personality to them. I'm saying that he's qualified like any other person. I'm also qualified to be the president of this country. That's the truth. But again, you do not speak authoritative because you are not in the mindset of the people. Opportunity okay. has been given for to you in 2019. What happened? Elections will be won in Nigeria. Elections cannot be won in Dubai. You can't go to your own mansions and stay and think that they are not we are not uh I think you'll be that then the cargo will stay anywhere and teach up others okay. and they will carry it out. Okay. This we are playing practical politics. We are you will come and show working and you must be here. Okay. All right. Finally, I'm coming back to you. Um what 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 do you think that Vice President Atikwa Bubaka needs to be sensitive when he's responding to issues about clinching the party ticket um, come 2023 because he seems to be very vocal about it. I mean, uh, there seems to be a little bit of... Um, I think... Re uh, he, he seemed to be very sure. Um, and that, that short, he was also in, in the tone of his voice. I think... I think... Um, I think Vice President Atikwa Bubaka is a man who has been in politics for a long time. He was, um, as of 1999, he was on his way to becoming governor of Adamawa State um, before he was tapped up to be vice president um, at that time. And um, he stood up for his then deputy to become the governor at that time, a Christian governor in Adamawa State. I think um, a lot of people are allowing emotions to get into this issue of 2023 politics all around uh, a single personality, um, the personality of uh, Vice President Atiku Abubakar. He is somebody who picks his word very carefully. When he speaks publicly, um, he, he's not somebody, he cannot be said to be flippant. You know, you cannot say that Vice President Atiku Abubakar, you can't say he's picking fights with different people. You will rarely find him in that kind of conversation. Um, what happens is that people usually talk about him because, you know, he is a political issue. He is the former um, Vice President. He is um, the former President. So does that, does that mean that he has time. everybody so, in the party at his whims and caprices? Because that's how he sounded. So again, uh, with all of you reeling out his CV, does it mean no, that he there, does he he's the are, only one within the party that's going to clink the ticket? And where's the place for internal democracy within the People's Democratic Party? The internal democracy will play out as it always does within the PDP. The last time in 2019, VP Atiku returned to the party and in less than six months he clinched the party ticket by winning over 50% of the votes. That was when he was just returning to the political party. And so even for a political strategist like myself, looking at the numbers, somebody who returned to the party within six months, he not only clinched the ticket, he won it with over 50% of delegate votes, over 1,600 votes, um, 1,773 votes at that time, I believe, um, 670 or well, over 50% of the votes. Okay? So he has been in the party for this time, for, for this long. It is only natural that you expect that there will be a certain measure of confidence. And look, it is nothing strange in politics. Even if I'm running for president, do you expect me to come out and say that, oh, I'm not going to win the ticket? If Ambassador okay. Dalit Sinoji is contesting for president, like he said, it's within his right, will he, will he be saying that, oh, I would not win? Of course, you'll be saying that you would win. So that's not arrogance. Again, that's politics. It's politics okay. for you. He's okay. only projecting an air of confidence. And I see no reason why anyone should have issues with that, especially well, within the People's Democratic Party. Well, we'll see how it plays out. All fingers crossed. So I, I want to say thank you. Um, Darlington RG is the... P PDP River State Publicity, former Publicity Secretary, and also we have been joined by Demola Olariwaju. He is a chieftain and a strategist with the P People's Democratic Party here in Lagos State. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we come back, we focus on the continuous uh, or rising insecurity in the southeast and what the governors are doing about it. Stay with us.